from hot spots and hidden gems to lots of local flavor, it's your guide to all things LA, the unscripted way from a true Hollywood classic, Barney's Beanery in WeHo. Everyone, grab yourself a booth and order a beer because they've got around 85 of them here at Barney's. Hi, I'm Dana Devin, and we have got another half hour of hot spots for you. Tonight, we're kicking things off by revealing the local must that's on top of our to do list. At the corner of 7th and Alvarado is one of LA's most iconic spots, and it was Sam Rubin's favorite food place. Langer's is a Jewish deli, family owned and run. It was started by my parents, Gene and Al Langer, June 17th, 1947. And we have enjoyed serving the customers and the people from the city of Los Angeles, be it politicians, be it doctors and lawyers, or be it regular people and families. One of my most favorite dishes is the matzo ball soup, because every time I get sick, I order this soup from Langer's Deli. It comes from all of the old, old Jewish culture. My mother's mother was from, was from Hungary, yeah. and she made it different than my father's mother, who was from Russia. So which one did you choose? It's a little bit of both. Really? You know you're doing it right when you have recurring customers that keep coming back, whether it be once a week, once a week or once a year, but they're back. And that tells me we're doing it right. Look you know, who's here, Norm. Yeah. The Look other who's Ruben pulling up arrived. next to you. There, I, it's about time I to know, see you. I know, this is just so fast. I was just stunned. Do you remember the first time you met Sam? You know what, I've known, I knew Sam for so many years and I was very fortunate to be able to be invited to the studio on several occasions and, and talk with Sam and talk on air and bring food there. It's the greatest place. He would have the number 19. He loved the soups, he loved the dessert. He liked a little bit of everything. You know, but I think his favorite was the number 19, as it is with many people. You know, we came here kind of on a whim, but also because we wanted to order the Sam Rubin number 19. It's our first time here, and we just wanted to come and remember Sam. Do you have a favorite Sam memory? You know, every morning we watch the KTLA news, 6 a.m. Uh, team, and I have so many memories of, of just having my coffee, watching the team have so much fun on set. And we would wait until Sam came on. That was the last segment we would watch. You're gonna teach me to make one of the most iconic dishes in Los Angeles. What is it? It's a number 19. This is the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This is the yeah, famous no. Langer's pastrami. I've won the Michelin Vermont Award. I've won the James Beard Award. I've got several awards from the city of Los Angeles, the county. I've got from the California Senate. One of the honors we had several years ago, the intersection here has signed it, and it's Langer's Deli. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, seriously. The Mona Lisa is not as pretty as that. Cheers to you, Sammy, to one of your favorite sandwiches, the number 19. Mm. He likes it, Richard likes it, he likes it. So listen, Norm, I wanna say thank you so much. You are such a legend in this community. Thank you for how you treated Sam. Thank you for all of the food You're today. You're more than welcome, but you must understand your afternoon here is not over. I mean, I expect you to wash some dishes so you understand the full circle here. We don't just come in here and eat. Oh, I have to earn my keep? Absolutely. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna do this. Go. Almost, almost. See, didn't you learn something new? Okay, right now we've got even more to keep you traveling around LA the unscripted way. Gibby 2 is definitely the best uh, gaming zone in all of LA County. Santa Clarita is a very family friendly area. This place definitely offers you know, a wide variety of things for all families. It is a seven acre facility, laser tag, we have virtual reality. Oh my God, this is super cool. We have 
a huge go-kart track, drift track. Um, we also have duck pin bowling. Basically anything from ages, you know, four years old to 80. MB2 Entertainment opened in April of 2022. The best ice cream ever. We do tons of birthday parties, corporate events, film shoots, uh, graduation lockouts. Woo Not a bad score! Basically any party you need to have, we can have it here. We got really good uh, craft bar food, awesome pizzas, really good wings. Um, pretzels and queso, tavern fries. Um, we also have beer and wine on, you know, on tap and bottle. Uh, so just very good stuff. MB2 Entertainment is a sister company of MB2 Raceway. At MB2, our, our main thing has always been go-karts. Uh, that's what our raceways have been known for. But at this place, uh, we do have a, a drift track, which is a lot of fun. It's a, like a slick track, so you kind of slide, slide around the track. You got a counter steer. It's a little bit more challenging than a normal race. And then we have the traditional track that's always been here. It's a quarter mile long. Uh, we also have double carts, so you can drive your, your, your little ones. The gaming area right here, we have about 75 plus games right in there, as well as uh, three really cool virtual reality games. The VR Rabbids is one of the most popular for sure. It's a headset game, you ride like roller coasters. Keeps you young, coming to work every day. Everyone's excited to be here. Uh, so it's just a great place to be. Did you know the whole Brat Pack used to hang out here? And no wonder they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner all day long. The menu is amazing, dying to try a hamburger here. And you know, Barney's Beanery is still a major meeting spot for Hollywood, but it's not the only place getting the unscripted treatment tonight. Maybe I revoke my vegan card. This is so good. Linden is, well, first and foremost, is a boulevard in New York that stems from Long Island through Queens to Brooklyn. It's Chef Jonathan Harris's creation, his imagination to fuse all these cuisines and cultures from the Caribbean side to the Eastern European side to Italian. You know, these are, these are all cultures that you see in New York. He's represented it truly well. One of my favorites is the snapper. The corn dust is a snapper. It's light, filling, and healthy. And also there's the rice over lamb, which is a real dish that signifies New York in the halal scene. Guys, look at this. This is their famous Wagyu pot pie. This thing is sold out ooh, all the time. We have a uh, Wagyu oxtail that we cook down for 14 hours. Okay. Let it sit in its juices, solidify it, then we take it from there, pull it from the bone. And then we also have a combination of a puff pastry dough and a patty dough. This naturally would be a British meat pot, but we switched it up a little bit, put some oxtail in there, sweet plantain on top. partnered on a restaurant before in New York, Last Lap, that's been open for nine years. We built a very healthy and great community out there, and we felt like that was a void here in Los Angeles of that same community of people who look like us, yeah. selves, and, and wanted to actually build that out here. Okay, so let's talk about chopped cheese, because how long has that been open? Chopped cheese, we started out in 2021 as a food truck, and that was an experience as itself, in itself. <laughs> <laughs> we were fortunate on the last like a year and a half ago to find this little location on Tamarind. It was the perfect setting for what we wanted to do in terms of a deli. After the chopped cheese got its its legs going, we, we got we got this space and it all made sense. Alright, well there isn't yeah. just this space. You guys have something else. Oh yes we do. Sure. Oh, well come on, let's let's show you all right. a little yeah. dot speak easy. Dot is its own separate thing. It's a speakeasy, it's a great vibe to continue at, after you actually are eating here. Uh, as our demo feels like it's closer to like 25 and up, a lot of times people want to go out, but they don't want to actually go to a club. You can just step across right next door and kind of continue the vibe. Sterling, how are you finding time to do this and filming ridiculous here? I'm finding time. We're filming 12 episodes a day, but we've got it to be efficient enough that I can knock that out and come here to my real duties. The support in the community reminds you of what, what you put together and they're so happy for you and they're happy for themselves to have a place to go and congregate. So that all feels good, but we, we, we hungry. We wanna keep you know cooking and keep making things for, for people like us to, to enjoy. My brother.
Well, we are just getting started. Coming up, more local hotspots and hidden gems when LA Unscripted from Barney's Beanery returns. Welcome back to LA Unscripted from Barney's Beanery. I'm Dana Devon. Now, if you love this place and can't get to WeHo, don't worry. There are four other Barney's locations all over Los Angeles. Speaking of going all over the city, here's another story we've unscripted just for you. It's football season and nothing says game day like finding the right flavors to accompany the action. I have dietitian Ashley Hawk here. Ashley, this is quite the spread. What do you have for us today? Well, you're so right. When it is the weekend in the fall, it's all about having the right overtime indulgences and things to snack on, which is why I'm really proud to partner with the wonderful company because they have some awesome foods that are gonna help amp up the nutrition and the flavor first dish over here is a great example of how we can take game day classics like a queso. Who doesn't love a creamy, cheesy, gooey queso? Love. But guess what? We're making this with plant-powered pistachios. So what we've done is we've just soaked them in water and then we put them into our blender. We blend them up with a little bit of nutritional yeast and then depending on what flavor you use, you can also add additional seasonings, but you might not even need it. This is the one that I made with the chili roasted Ooh, pistachios. Chili roasted. Okay, you gotta give it a try. But okay. what I also love about this is in every serving, you're getting all nine essential amino acids. All right, I love a good queso, so I'm gonna be a harsh critic on it. The other good thing to keep in mind, Olivia, is that unlike a traditional queso, which is gonna be high in saturated fat, this is made with polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fat. In my nutrition playbook, we always wanna eat the rainbow, right? Yes. And what a great way to do that by putting out a really fun, colorful spread. So in the middle here, I have the shelled pistachios because this is also a great way to avoid that mindless snacking. So we have the roasted sweet potatoes. Okay. Then what you do is put them out with a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and then you've got your crushed pistachios of any flavor of choice. Dip it directly in the glaze and then right into the pistachios. And you have this really gourmet looking beautiful bite that you get to take. Because we also wanna make sure that we have more of an entree to serve, right? So we are gonna be creating this Palm Wonderful 100% pomegranate juice marinade. Ooh. So you're gonna help me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add in the pomegranate juice. Okay. And what I love about the Palm Wonderful juice is that it has no added sugar, no fillers. Then we're gonna add in some olive oil. You can go ahead and add in the vinegar and then there's also the garlic over here. The Palm Wonderful Juice has 700 milligrams of polyphenol antioxidants. Wow. So we're making a drink that we're calling the Palm Refresh because it's got a lot of fresh mint in it. So go ahead and start muddling this at the bottom of the glass. Okay. Here's I'm gonna add mint. a lot of mint because I'm a big mint fan. Exactly, I it's love like mint too. Exactly. And then what you're gonna do is give it a good stir there. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is add in eight ounces of the pomegranate juice. And not only does it have the antioxidants, but it also has as much potassium as a banana. So that's gonna keep you healthy, it's gonna keep you refreshed. And then here's the fun little kicker to this drink, okay. is we're gonna add in just a teeny pinch of Himalayan sea salt. Bet you didn't salt. see that coming. Uh-huh. This is just gonna bring out the flavor. And then we're also gonna add in a dash of water to help it all kind of come together. Thank you, Ashley. Well, thank you so much. And if you wanna get more of these recipes or find out more, just go to at Palm Wonderful or at Wonderful Pistachios. Okay, coming up, more secret spots and hidden gems, plus a few places you'll only find on our unscripted map. So come right back. I'm right here at Barney's waiting for you, all by my lonesome, just sitting by myself. Welcome back everyone to LA Unscripted. So what does going off script mean to you? To us, it means trying new things, like one of the dozens of amazing chilies they have here at Barney's Beanery. So good. But right now, our sponsor wants to keep you in the know about this. It's Hispanic Heritage Month, and my friends at Goya and Bracken's Kitchen are gonna teach me how to make some delicious chili. Look at that. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be a pro. Bracken's Kitchen is a nonprofit hunger relief organization here in Orange County. Our mission statement reads through food rescue, culinary training, and our community feeding programs. 
we're committed to rescuing, repurposing, and restoring both food and lives. And what that means in simple terms is we get to go to work every day in our kitchen. In America, we're still wasting up to 40% of our food supply, food that's perfectly good being thrown away. Well, people right down the street don't know where the next meal is going to come from. So we have a robust food rescue for food donation program, uh, and we bring in tons. I mean, we're talking 500 tons of food this year. Uh, we often describe ourselves as a catering company. We just happen to cater to those who can't pay for their meals. Well, when I think about Goya Foods and their mission just to feed people and Goya gives, and obviously with a focus on the Hispanic population, what they serve, I mean, it's a perfect partnership. Goya is the uh, largest Hispanic-owned uh, food company in the United States. There's two passions that we have. One is the quality of our food, and the other huge passion is to uh, give back to the communities that we serve. We celebrate Hispanic heritage, we celebrate the traditions of uh, Hispanics that have uh, helped build uh, this country uh, to where it is right now, uh, to build the communities uh, where we uh, uh, operate, and uh, it is a very important uh, uh, event in our uh, traditions. Alfredo here is going to show me how to make some chili, right? Chili, yes. Okay, you want me to cut some onions? Of course. Okay. First of all, am I going to cry? A little bit, but not that <laughs> much. <laughs> a little bit, it's fine. We're sautéing some meat right now. Yeah. Ooh, the smell. Yeah. The smell is so good already. This is for like 30 people. 30 people? 30 We're feeding people. 30 people here, OK. Yeah, you need to put only like maybe three spoons. OK, three spoons. Yeah. So the bowl, it has the rice, it has the chili. chili. Now we do toppings. Yeah, exactly. What do we have going on so here? So the first thing is like a, like a sour cream. OK. The next one, like a most, uh, cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese. And cilantro. Amazing. OK, yeah. and do you want me to do it? Please. <laughs> All right, I'm a sour cream gal. Don't judge me. I know that's not the way to do it. But that's, that's a little too much, but that's oh. OK. <laughs> Let me see how about you cook. <laughs> uh, yeah. Cheers. Mmm, so good. Perfect. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's really good. That's really good, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's nothing that will ever replace providing a meal to someone who can do nothing other than say thank you. As you guys know, it's my job to keep you on top of all the cool things in LA but you're really gonna thank me for this one. Yeah, that's it, that's wholesome. Hey. Yeah, perfect, dude. Lights, camera, action. Today we are with fashion and portrait photographer, Ryan Slack. Ryan? Dana, I dare you to be the photographer today. Let's snap to it. Woo, let's do it. might be hard to be a photographer right now, given how good the phones are, yes. given how good the AI is. Like you said, you know, the challenge of being a photographer in the modern world, everyone has a phone, you know, everyone's a photographer, everyone, you know, has their own style. And what I would say is important is that you gotta find what you like in photography and, and lean into that, you know, and you gotta make it your own, you gotta do it your way. We got these clothes, we're gonna do some portraits and some headshots. Let's look and see, let's pick out a good, simple headshot outfit. When people are preparing for a headshot, yeah. what kind of wardrobe should they be like looking for to wear? You know, you want to be wearing something that you definitely feel yourself in. And you know, so I told you, you know, when I said, bring your favorite stuff that you feel your best in. The reason I chose this is because it's just, it's nondescript enough that it's not gonna, you know, take away from you. Okay. So, you know, I told you I gave you the simple setup first. You've now graduated to the better setup and I'm gonna give you a big stool. Nice, dude. That's great. This like, is so good. Oh my God, this might be my favorite. Yeah. Now watch, I'm gonna put him like this, and okay. I'm gonna have him look off to the side, and okay. it's gonna like instantly go from headshot to just portrait. So this is headshot, so show me portrait. Okay. Why is it important to really kind of get a good set of headshots or a good portrait? I mean, headshots, uh, steak dinner, automotive, you're gonna get what you pay for. You're investing in yourself. It's not about spending the money and then it's gonna be a good shot, but a good photographer is gonna really be interested 
and making you look your best. Now's okay. the dare. I'm okay. giving you the camera and hold the lens okay. with your left hand. Perfect. Okay. Whoa, 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 just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she got me. <laughs> <laughs> If you're gonna okay, take a picture on. once, like, you should take a picture like five okay. or six times. I'm gonna pretend like, okay, now let's see what we got here. Oh, what? Hey, that's art. Something. I feel like this is not going well. Yeah, um, you're missing the focus a little right. bit. Right. Push it down halfway, oh, yeah, and then focuses. push it down the other half. Yeah. All right, now. Okay, you gotta, that's you what Kate thinks zone. of my photography mm. skills. What should a headshot, a good headshot capture? Good headshot is almost like a glorified DMV photo. You don't want too much body, you don't want too much fashion, not any crazy kick lights or whatever, and you gotta be yourself, you know? You gotta look at the camera with confidence and just do your thing. Shake it out. Yeah. Shake it out. I want you to suck in your cheeks a little bit. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Yeah! Yes. Blue your steel. Hair out a little bit. Okay, there give me is. blue steel. Oh my oh, gosh. Oh yeah, that's the one. Thank you so much to Barney's Beanery for having us. And if you haven't been to one of their locations, come on down. You can't even imagine what you're missing. It's so cool. We will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us. Mwah.